Joining me now is Professor Eitan Gilboa, an expert on U.S. relations at Bar Ilan University, who is uh, keeping up with the growing international pressure, including from the Biden White House, to extend humanitarian pauses, perhaps, uh, if not use the word, ceasefire, put a, a temporary pause on the fighting itself. Professor, thanks so much for being with me. Talk to me about the pressure. Clearly, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of pressure. Netanyahu uh, last night saying that we, even if we have to stand alone, we will continue to fight until victory. Is there real, tangible, concrete pressure that the U.S. is exerting on Net the Netanyahu government, or are they still letting the Netanyahu government uh, give a free hand to complete the mission at hand? Neither nor. Uh, there is some pressure uh, about uh, uh, minimizing uh, the killing of uh, civilians and much pressure on um, increasing humanitarian assistance. Israel is saying that um, uh, humanitarian assistance is okay, but um, uh, the, the uh, leaders of the West must also demand uh, humanitarian gestures from Hamas. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not hearing at all from European leaders uh, saying to Hamas what it what they say uh, to Israel. They say to Israel, you have to abide by international law. But I have not heard them saying the same thing to Hamas. Is it possible that evil terrorist organizations are exempt from international law from uh, from legal? Uh, uh, rules that govern uh, govern law. Uh, if I were the head of the International Red Cross, I would call for a press conference every day and say, Hamas, you are violating international law. You are you are required to give us access uh, to to uh, to uh, hostages, and and that way to apply pressure uh, on uh, on, uh, on on Hamas. Uh, we don't know what are the um, Hamas's uh, demands for the releasing of hostages. We know what it wants. And what it wants is a ceasefire so it could regroup and undermine the Israeli military momentum running after them at the Shifa hospital headquarters. Hmm. Professor, we are one year away from the U.S. presidential election, the key election. Uh, we have massive anti-Israel protests uh, across the United States. We have pro-Palestinian marches and demonstrations at college campuses across, from coast to coast in America. Uh, they're exerting pressure on lawmakers uh, against Israel, against the Israeli actions. What pressure uh, do you think that the U.S. government is feeling from these protests? And is there shock, is there surprise at the anger, the hatred of Israel, uh, despite the legality and the justice of Israel's mission? Yes, I think, I, I, I was not surprised because I'm teaching in the United States every year. I've seen these processes of dehumanization, delegitimization of Israel, the occupation of, uh, of universities in the United States. Columbia University has become an occupied Palestinian territory. They do what they want. They decide who will teach, what to teach, where to teach. This is absurd. But now we, we see uh, how uh, all of these uh, things are exploding. In terms of pressure, yes, there is a lot of time until uh, the presidential elections. So far, I think that uh, these demonstrations are not influencing American attitudes uh, toward Israel and the war. I would also say that uh, public opinion surveys in the United States taken recently show that uh, the American public is with Israel, not with the demonstrators. They, they, are, uh, they, they uh, shout much, but uh, there's not uh, public support for their uh, slogans, especially the one that has been uh, now uh, clarified from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. I heard uh, Rashida Talib saying, oh, this is, we only want human rights in the entire area from the River Jordan to the Mediterranean Sea. This is bullshit because it says Palestine will be free, which means the elimination of Israel. So I think that uh, there are all kinds of uh, psychological warfare inside the United States and, uh, and, and in the Middle East. 
there are some people who say that um, um, uh, that um, Biden's strong support for Israel will be translated into additional voting for him, especially among Jews and supporters of Israel in the United States. Hmm. Professor, thanks so much for being with us and for your analysis uh, of the situation. Great to have you. Thank you.